Hi, so recently I've been working on ways to make good realistic looking tiles. Tiles are something that I've been struggling with for a long time and I used to just use the method where I take an image texture of tiles and use that for the tile texture, but there's actually a much easier way and way more controllable way to make tiles in Blender using just Blender nodes, so let's get into it. So these are some tiles that I whipped up for this tutorial right here. And um, they're actually using the brick texture, which is awesome because with the brick texture, you can control the width, you can control uh, the offsets, and uh, you can control the scale and a lot of other things. So you have very, very easy to customize bricks. But uh, let's get into what this big mess of nodes are and how they work. So, to start this off, let's add in a brick texture here. And I'm just going to plug that into the base color. I'm going to do a few things to it. I'm going to turn the mortar smoothness up. I found that really helps with making the bump node look better later on. I'm going to turn the mortar size down to 0 0.005 or somewhere in that range. I like to make the mortar be a whitish or very close to white color. And now I'm going to make the color of these, say for right now, we'll just put them as a nice blue somewhere in there. Actually, this one can stay white. This one can go blue. All right. I'm going to take this color. I'm going to plug it into the normal and add in a bump here. Plug it into the height. You can see we've already got something but it's uh, going the wrong direction, so I'm going to press invert. So now they're sticking and bumping out. I'm going to maybe turn down the strength just a little bit, but we still want it to be very visible that there's uh, gaps in here. I'm going to plug this into the roughness. And um, you can see now that looks pretty nice. I'm going to add in a color ramp to control the roughness. And if we select this, white is going to be very flat. Black is going to be very reflective. And for most indoor spaces, you want the tiles themselves to be reflective and the mortar to be pretty flat. However, if this was outside and it was supposed to be a wet scene, you'd probably want the inside, like the mortar, to be very reflective and the tiles to be a little bit less so to imply that the water has settled down into the cracks. But for right now, let's make this tiles be a bit more dramatic and keep it like this. So now we have um, some of the tiles have a slightly different reflective property and these look pretty nice. And that's it. That's honestly all you really need to do to make some basic looking tiles. And these, these are great for backgrounds, but they're not great for holding up to photorealism because for that we need some surface imperfections, which we don't have right now. And surface imperfections are really easy to add. Um, you can do it with noise textures or anything like that, but I'm going to go in honestly and just add in an image texture here. I'm going to do this dirty metal that I like to use all the time. And I'm going to throw a mix shader in. I'm going to plug it in right after the color ramp right here. And I'm going to use this dirty metal to control the mix like so. Now, what is that doing? You can see a few little bits right here. But basically, it's going to take this and use it to control the values here. Yeah, you can see a little bit of it showing through. And you can control whether we're seeing perfect reflective bits or we're seeing like very smudged bits. And I want this smudginess. So if we look at it like this, this already looks pretty good right now. Like look how much better it looks when the light is disrupted by these smudges, especially like over in here. Uh, I want a bit more control. So I'm going to add in a, another color ramp, plug it into this factor here. And now you can see we can really dial in these values like so. Okay, now, if you want even more smudging, 
what you can do is do this whole process here, except into the color. So you take this mix, duplicate it up and put it here. You take this dirty metal, put it into the factor. You duplicate this dirty metal control, put it here so you can control what how much of uh, how much of the original you're seeing and how much of the new material you're seeing. So I want something like this. So we're getting some little flux of discoloration. And if you really want to get into it, you can plug the dirty metal itself into this color too here, like that. So um, then you can take another color ramp, add in a new one, and plug that into this dirty metal. So now we can change that to look however we want. Maybe kind of a brownish, I'm not sure. That's up to you. But to just give some color to the discoloration here. And that's basically it. That's all the steps I go through to make my bricks look the way they do. It's uh, really fun to take like this and uh, change the offset to zero and make the brick width and size 0.25. So they're all even and make these cute little like bathroom tiles like that's I think where these really shine is when you make these side by side tiles like this that aren't offset because it looks really good for filling out walls or little spaces. And yeah, like I said before, they're perfectly controllable. You can change the scale or uh, anything about them like this looks really cool. You could do like a little mosaic like this. Anyways, that's how I make these textures. I hope this is helpful and that's, uh, yeah, it's useful. Anyways, see you next time.